Hello and welcome to the second part of our guide to the origin creator. Last time we focused primarily on the thought process behind balancing powers based on the most common attributes of popular origins. We did this as an abstract overview of the mod which culminated in our demonstrative origin, the pig. Our first powers introduced the capabilities of the origin's creator by showing how you can reduce the health of a player as well as some of the functionalities of conditions. In this guide, we will delve deeper into conditions, using them to create more interesting and more functional powers, as well as getting into the thought process behind the coding itself. Let's start by making our origin more like its source material, by restricting the diet of the pig. Calling a pig a vegetarian would be factually incorrect. I once heard them described as an opportunistic omnivore who will eat most anything. However, for the sake of the challenge, we will limit them by calling them a forager. I would like to stop for a moment and address the nature of these guides. Coding is a painstaking and slow process which will make you suffer and cry for any payoff. I want to show you the research that goes into each segment of the program, and the many, many attempts to run it in-game, which resulted often in it not working at all. But for the sake of time, I can't. I say this just to let you know that this will be a long process. I think by this point in the code, I had run the game at least 40 separate times to get it to run how I wanted it to. I've left some of the raw footage in, hopefully, to convey this. All the same, I wanted to show a possible way to create a diet and health restriction at minimum in these guides because they were especially common and practical drawbacks for an origin to have. So as I work on the research for the food power in the background, let's talk about how to code a power in an efficient and practical way. First, search for the power by name, any word that directly relates to the effect you want. If there are any powers with that name, click on them and read what it says. If it doesn't say it can achieve the effect you want, move on and consider the following. Powers are broken down as regular, action-related, modifying, and preventing. So in our case, a diet, the only choice from among these that would make sense is a preventing power. It's also helpful to consider what the power itself interacts with. Food is an item in game. The only two categories that relate to item use are the action-related and preventing categories. I noticed while editing that neither the help text or available sections were shown in the footage for some inexplicable reason. All the same, I'll show them here. The only types related to food directly were the food and meat item types. In our case, we could have probably just used the meat item type as our condition. Let's create a solution applicable for all categories. Originally, I thought the solution would be a condition for the player. And when I found one called using item, which directly referenced food in its description, I was more certain this was the correct answer to the problem of a diet, so that when you were not eating a carrot, it would stop you from eating at all. So I set about creating it, setting the item type as an ingredient. An ingredient is perhaps a misnomer, as it could be any item in Minecraft using the standard ID designation. This turned out to not be the answer. Believe me, I tested it several times with various different configurations of inversion. It, it's not. It's not the answer. The real solution lay in the item condition itself. By making the condition an AND, I could prevent the use of items that satisfied more than one condition. The first was that the item be a food. The second would be the item condition of not being a carrot. This would mean that all food besides carrots could not be eaten. I added the other food types to the list as necessary to match those of the pig, and as we can see, the power now works. This method of restricting diet, aside from specific items, can be used in any combination as necessary. You could make someone exclusively eat golden foods if you chose to do so. I should also mention that item IDs for specific items can be found using F3 and H, which turns advanced tooltips on. What this means is that when you hover over an item, it will give you an item ID as well as durability if you want to know exactly how many blocks you can break and some other information. All the same, I added any remaining items that I found that felt suitable for the pig to eat, and decided to expand the food source even more. I'm going to show you how to make any item edible. In my extensive research, I learned that pigs actually eat pumpkins, and it surprised me so much that I decided I wanted to recreate that in-game. So using our same logic from earlier, what power would this be? The only solution that fits is action-related, specifically action on item use. We then can give the item an action, which will be consume. This will be followed by the entity action feed, which restores a set value of hunger and saturation. Hunger being the value shown, and saturation being a hidden value in-game which controls how quickly you get hungry again. 
There's a handy chart that gives a comparison of saturation values uh, available on the Minecraft wiki. The only reference point I have for this, though, is the pumpkin pie, which restores 8 hunger and 4.8 saturation. But due to the lack of complexity, pumpkins have to restore less, so I've elected to have the hunger and saturation restored. I finally set the item condition to be exclusively pumpkins, and it didn't work. Again, after several more tests, I got a little antsy, and that is when true ingenuity strikes. When you have eliminated the impossible, whatever remains, however improbable, must be the truth. The solution was to expand my search. Action on item use would only apply to usable items, even as description says when the player finishes using an item. So we need something more bare bones we can build upon, something referred to as active self, a power that activates when the player presses a certain key. In the origins creator, right click is documented as key.use. With that done, I could then recreate my original code here. However, I would make one small change, which is to have the saturation again, because according to the documentation in the creator, it calculates the values by doubling saturation. Now we could eat pumpkins, but a new problem has arisen. I could consume them instantly and even when my hunger bar was completely filled. This meant adding two new conditions with the AND function. The first was to restrict the power by the food level of the player, so that it had to be below the max, which is 20. The second was an inverted condition that the player was sneaking. This way, if you wanted to place a pumpkin while hungry, you could do so as long as you crouched. We can now move on to the third and final step of creating this power, which is to polish the power and add any extra pieces we want to make it more immersive. First, I'm going to add a cooldown. According to the Minecraft wiki, it takes approximately 1.6 seconds to eat any food item, so I will convert this to the equivalent, 32 ticks, to simulate the effect. Next, I will add the only food-related audio effect available, a burp. And finally, we will look at a new entity action called Spawn Particles. This has two options, string and object. The string function allows you to use a pre-existing particle, but in our case, we will use the object particle type. This allows us to define the particle as being a block type, then renaming the block we're using, which is a pumpkin. This makes our power fully functional, and our origin now has two fully functional powers, or what you might call power groups. First, we have passive, a power that makes us weak and have less health but gives us a small speed boost to flee when we are struck. Our second group, Forager, restricts our food source but lets us eat more than a standard Minecraft pig. This includes pumpkins. This leaves us leaning heavily towards weaknesses, which is a good place to be because it can justify more interesting powers that can balance us out with some extreme advantages. So let's start looking at what it means for our pig to be lucky. We will create a new file and call it Fortune which may give you some insight as to what I hope to achieve with this power. In Minecraft, the fortune enchant gives a 33% chance to multiply the drops from ores by 2. Theoretically, I could extend this effect to every ore available in Minecraft, making it so that the pig always mines as though they had fortune 1 on any pickaxe, and potentially achieving a final effect like that of fortune 4. However, for that effect, I would have to create a separate file for each ore so I will just make it for the one I see the most connection with, gold. First, we will select the power action on block break. The selection only when harvested means that this power will only function when we would be able to collect the block. To achieve the fortune effect, let's first look at the entity action. One of the options is called chance, which lets you create a percentage for which this action is successful. This is the decimal version of whatever corresponding percentage you want. So for fortune 1, 33% to 0.33. Then we can use the entity action give, which will give an item to the entity this action is done to. We can set the item given as a golden ingot and the action itself is now complete. However, because there are no conditions, this power would trigger for every block, which we do not want. By using the block condition or and the condition block, we can specify a set number of blocks this power will trigger for. Now, the last condition we need to set is to prevent someone using Silk Touch from receiving this benefit, using the condition Equipped Item with the item condition of an enchantment. So now let's test this power. I, I already know it will work. I, I shouldn't pretend any differently, but, but this was the one and only power that worked 100% the first time I tested it in-game. 
So let me celebrate, okay? Let me have this. Now, as we can see from a sample size of 30, we got 11 gold ingots while using a normal pickaxe. And when we test the same thing with a silk touch pickaxe, we get no extra golden ingots. So that means that our power is working. I will add after the fact that this power can be used for so much more than just a fortune enchantment for ore. These effects work really well if your source can be related to some field of work and doesn't have a predefined strength. And when I say source here, I mean the source for your origin. I figured I should specify. Imagine, this can be expended to crops. Maybe you get a 10% chance to get an extra crop from any harvest. Or you can make it work to give you 50% more logs than most people get from any tree. Or you can do what I did next, which is to make it so that you get more apples from breaking leaves. Since this effect is the same as our previous power for gold, I will not show the coating itself, but instead explain the rationale behind it. Apples drop from both oak leaves and dark oak leaves, with a 0.5% chance, which I elected to make twice as likely for the pig, so a 1% chance, or 0.01. The only other thing to look out for in the change is to include both shears and silk touch as conditions this power will not work for. And with that, the pig can now forage for apples twice as effectively as a normal player. So far, all of our effects have been constant or static on the pig. So we are going to end today by giving our pig its first active power, making the pig a mount for players and other mobs. The first part of this power will be the pig's ability to pick up another mob, using a power called Action on Entity Use. This power triggers whenever the player right-clicks an entity. We can then assign a Buy Entity action, and one of the options available is Mount. However, because this action places the actor on top of the target, it will not work on its own. To compensate for this, we attach the actor action invert, which reverses this relationship. I'm also going to restrict this action with the buy entity condition that the actor has to have a food level greater than 6, which is the same requirement as sprinting in Minecraft. Next, I will add an item condition, so that the only way to pick up another mob is if you have a saddle in your hand when you right-click the entity. The last function we will add is to create a cost for using this power. With the AND function, we can pick up the entity and use the actor action exhaust on ourselves. Exhaustion in Minecraft is anything that burns through saturation or hunger. The highest example of this is regeneration. For every half a heart regained, you gain 6 exhaustion in exchange. So for now, I set this power to the exact same value. Next, we're going to work on a way to remove the mob from us, so we will create a new file as part of this power, which we will call dismount. We can use the power active self with an entity action, passenger action, dismount. And as for conditions for this power, we will make it so that you have to be sneaking and not holding a saddle. And when we pull it into Minecraft, we can now see that this power works and we can pick up mobs. You can even swap them out, though this seems less reliable than just the standard power. Finally, I want to control when this power is active so that players can't jump on your head, or to prevent any mishaps with local wildlife that you don't want to pick up even when holding a saddle. To do this, we will create a new file called toggle, and within it the power toggle, which will turn on the power at the press of a key. Then, you can go into each of the other files and give it another condition, power active. Then assign which power to check with its location name. In this instance, we're assigning the power toggle, so that whenever you activate this power, you can pick up other mobs, and whenever you deactivate it, you won't be able to pick up mobs, and you won't be able to be ridden. With more of our origin completed, let's take a look at how viable this origin is. The pig has some extreme weaknesses. Low HP makes you a soft target, and with reduced damage, you don't have much in the way to defend yourself. Because of this, you'll spend more time trying to avoid damage or regenerating health, which takes time and hunger, which is further strained by your foraging diet. However, while you are vulnerable, you're also fast and able to escape a lot of confrontations if you're careful, maybe taking one hit to get a boost, to get back far enough to build a barricade or equip a shield. You also have access to more gold and more apples than anyone else, so you can counter some of your detriments by living off of the most luxurious food source. To top this all off, you have the ability to pick up mobs, which opens a whole new window of creativity for you to explore. For those curious, you cannot pick up the Ender Dragon, but you can pick up the Wither. Do with that what you will, but bear in mind just because you can do something doesn't mean you should. I don't really know how to do those outro things, so uh, like and subscribe if this guide helped you or something.
check out the Origins Creator. It's a ton of fun, and making your own Origins is uh, how to enjoy the mod again if you've had a lot of experience with it. Yeah. All right. We're done here.